Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Coming to you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, we're going to talk about why it's important to use a realtor for your real estate transactions. We've talked about so many other different pieces to the real estate process and what it means uh, for home ownership. But today we're going to talk about the benefits of using a realtor. And to join me with that, I have lending expert Jenny Miller with Ross Mortgage. As being another professional in the real estate industry, she can give us her perspective from the lending side of things as to why it is in your benefit to work with a realtor. Let's get Jenny on to join us. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Tracy. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good. I think I'm going to have to put on my glasses. <laughs> just for this. All right. Welcome. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. You look fabulous in your glasses. So. Well, thanks for yeah. having me. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. And I can read. It's a bonus. But yeah. <laughs> I do think it's really important to, you know, discuss, you know, what, what you do. Right. Why it's important to have a realtor, you know, involved in your transaction. Yep. Um, even on the lending side, I mean, we work as partners. Exactly. With with agents, and we are all working toward the same goal, which is to close the loan and get you into the home. Right. So working with a, a strong agent partner um, helps from the very beginning, before even a, we as a lender talk to clients, mm -hmm. all the way through closing and even after that. So I think it's going to be great for you to um, share some perspective here. So yes, well, I'm glad to have you join us today. And yes, that is true. It's We do work together um, and you and I have worked together on many transactions, which are fantastic. We both have similar goals in that we like to be consultants and actually help work in our client's best interest, um, which actually brings me to a point. So. Many people don't understand um, that there is a thing that's called agency. Um, as a realtor, we can we can have we have different agencies depending on who we're working for. Um, we can be a the seller's agent, or we can be the buyer's agent. There are also some other other agencies such as dual agency and transaction coordinators, but those aren't really used quite as often. The primary two are seller's agent and buyer's agent. And what that means is if I am either your seller's agent or your buyer's agent, I have a fiduciary responsibility to you. Even though I personally feel responsible and like to help and do what's best for my clients, when we sign that paperwork, I now also have a legal obligation to work in your best interest. Yep. Um, so as a buyer, if you are a buyer looking for a home, there's what's called a buyer agency agreement and there is also um, an agency disclosure, which gets completed. And what that does is it clearly outlines what my responsibilities are as your buyer's agent and as a fiduciary, which means I have a responsibility to work in your best interest. Um, Absolutely. So there's, there's some, you know, like this market has been crazy and there are some people out there that think, oh, I think I'm probably better off. I can just, you know, the house sells its on the listing side. The house sells itself or as a buyer, well, maybe if I, I don't have a realtor, then, you know, maybe I have a better chance of getting a home because I can go with whomever. Um, but it's actually quite the opposite. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think, you know, on the, on the buyer side that you see, relationships are very important. And when we establish you know, those of us who are professionals and this is what we do, mm -hmm. we establish relationships, um, not only with our clients, but with each other. And when you have experience and history working with other experienced professionals and you know and can expect a level of professionalism and working through real estate transactions, there are so many different things that can come up throughout the process. Um, it's not just a matter of, yeah, it's not just a matter of, oh, I found a buyer for my house or, oh, I found a house I want to buy. That's just one very small piece of it. <laughs> there are so many other components that go into the home selling and the home buying process. And it's what we do every day. So we expect issues to come up and, 
you know, are ready to work through those in a manner so that everything continues to move forward and in your best interest, because I'm working in, in your best interest if you're my client. Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the purchase agreement itself, I mean, there are numerous options, right? Mm -hmm. Everything from um, the buyer, buyer can select their own title company, for example. Do you want a home inspection? Do you not? Home warranty? Do you, do you not? Um, how quickly should you be applying for a mortgage? Um, now a big one is, um, you know, buyers waiving their right to a home inspection. Um, I, I understand what the market is, but I also... You know, I would never I, I, that in particular, but right. You know no, what I mean, I never, I never recommend waiving a home inspection. Even in this competitive market, I have gotten plenty of clients into homes during this very competitive wild, wild west season, and none of them waive their home inspection. So, and, and I think too, and um, you know, a listing agent, right? They prep their client. You know, listing agents too. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of things. It's not like they yep. stick a sign out in front and right. that's it. My gosh, no. Right. No, no, no. You know, I mean, you're comping out the property. You're viewing the property ahead of time, right? Yes. Um, letting the seller know maybe there's some things that you see yep. that they should maybe address ahead of time. Um, you'll help them with, you know, staging so the home shows, you know, at its best. Yes. Yeah. What When I go through a property, when, yes, when I have a client that has, it, you know, is thinking about selling their home, uh, when I walk through their property, I come through with, I call them my buyer eyes. So I come through the property and I'm helping and giving suggestions as to what you can do to prepare the home for the market so you appeal to the, the masses, you know, the largest group of buyer, mm -hmm. you know, the largest buyer pool. And so there might be things, I have some sellers that say, oh, I have, you know, the whole list of things that I want to get done to my house before you even come and look at it. They say, no, wait, let me come through it first because there are some things that you may be doing that isn't going to necessarily help add any value or create more appeal for buyers, but there may be mm -hmm. other pieces that will get you the biggest bang. Um, and so it's, it's really important, you know, because not only do I work, I'm, I am a marketing major. I've worked on the marketing side of things for many years. Um, I have a passion for, for the listing side of things, but I also love working with and helping the buyers and I walk through a lot of different properties as well. And, you know, you hear the comments, you know what buyers are thinking and what, uh, you know, what stands out and what doesn't. So Right. Absolutely. And even as a lender, one thing that does come up, um, mostly with first-time home buyers, we talk about their down payment, we talk about their closing costs. And I say, but how do I pay the realtor? Right, right. <laughs> Where am I going to get the money, you know, to pay the realtor? Or how much is it? And um, so they don't understand how, you know, right. how you're paid other than, um, you know, it's commission based and right. that's not something that they you right. know, pay in, for. In Michigan, um, it's customary practice that the, the commissions are paid by the seller. Um, so the listing broker is who has the, the, the contract with the seller and those commissions are already negotiated prior to the home even going on the market. So, you know, for those buyers that think, oh, well, am I going to be in a better position if I'm not working with a buyer's agent? No, you're not. Because those commissions, you know, that cost has already been negotiated. That's already established up front. So you coming to a seller without having, um, you know, somebody looking out for your best interest you're actually putting yourself in a weaker position. Um, it's it's not helping you financially. And in fact, most of the time, the buyers end up paying more than they should or not being represented and not having, if something does come up on a home inspection, um, the buyers just doesn't, just doesn't have somebody who's looking out for them throughout the whole process. Because as we talked about, there's the fiduciary responsibility. A listing agent is the fiduciary to the seller. Their, their allegiance, their, you know, what they're working towards is the seller's best interest. So if a buyer comes without a buyer's agent, without somebody representing them, mm -hmm. that listing agent, although they may seem very nice and very helpful, they're not working for you as a buyer. They are, they are working for their seller. So, so it's just something to, that's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, there's there's so many different aspects to when it comes to the paperwork. Um, you know, 
Those are yes. legal documents, legal documents that you are bound to once signed. You want to make sure that you have somebody that understands, you know, what those now I'm not an attorney. However, I do work with those documents every day and can explain to you the purchase agreements that I work with every day. Here's what it states. Here's what you are agreeing to when you sign these documents. Right now, you know, um, many times people will want to go with the for sale by owner route. And so, um, each pa loan package is a little bit different. Many times look at um, a for sale by owner packet from a title company, you know, that they're familiar with. And they, between the seller and the buyer, they'll even say, well, who fills it out first? <laughs> or what, well, because they don't know. It's not right. something to do all the time, right? right? Um, and so it's also, it's a little more difficult, right, to figure out your responsibilities and the packages are always very nice and they try to outline the process but many times there's there's questions right or there's um, a standard purchase agreement depending on the title company there's things that are on an agent's um, purchase agreement that aren't even covered mm -hmm. and so if the buyer doesn't know to negotiate something and the seller also right and I'm not a licensed agent I can't give any real estate advice nor am I, you know, an attorney just like you. Right. We can do our best, you know, to help answer basic questions. But um, there are quite a few things that can come up. And unless you're well-versed, um, sometimes it doesn't end up as the big money saver, you know, that right. people that you hope think it, it will be. Yeah, I, I do find it interesting because, you know, when you work as a buyer's on the buyer side with a buyer's, uh, as a buyer's agent, um, you know, from time to time, we do end up working with someone who decided to sell for sale by owner. And they really do look to us to basically lead the whole process and, and kind of handle both sides of things. Um, right. And it, you know, where if they had their, their agent, you know, those things would have been taken care of. But it, it's, it's funny. I had someone say to me before they decided to sell by owner and they're like, I don't understand why I'm getting all these calls. The lender is calling me, the title company is calling me. They're asking me all of these questions. And I just it kind of chuckled because there's so much that goes into the process. It's not just, oh, we found a buyer for our home and now, you know, we sold our house. Um, I, that, that's something that's very interesting to me. How many people, as soon as they have a buyer, they say, we sold our house. Well, you actually, it's, it's not sold until you hit closing day and everybody signs all those final documents. There's a lot that goes yes. on from the time a purchase agreement is signed to the time that you get to the closing table. And, um, you know, there's a lot of that day to day that that we handle and we do it every day. So for us, maybe sometimes we make it look a little too easy, um, you know, yeah. because if we're good at what we do, then, you know, you know, we make it come off as as though it's easy or seamless. Um, but really, there's there's a lot that goes into it. And, um, you know, that's I'm here. I'm happy to help. Um, I, I love helping others. I love helping them get through. I had such an awesome closing with clients yesterday. They are the sweetest couple, the sweetest family. And um, we did have quite a few issues that came up on their home as you know, throughout the sale process, um, which got them a little bit stressed out, but we worked through it. You know, we took it, I, I told them we'll take it one step at a time. And we got through, we worked through all of it, closed on their home, found their dream home, um, and it just, you know, the timing wise, everything, we got everything to work out so that there's no uh, moving into any temporary housing. It's just moving from one home to the next and they're thrilled and can't wait to get into their new home. And I'm thrilled for them. So, and you know, that's, that's the way that I think we all strive for transactions to be because there are, there can be hiccups, there can be bumps, there can be yep. multiple things that are out of the buyer's or seller's control. You know, sometimes things they do pop up, right? Yes. Even on the yep. lending side, but, um, Strong communication, so the buyer always know what's going on with the seller. You know, same thing. They're always in the loop. They know what's happening. Yep. It, it's more than the communication and being on top of everything, but it's also being able to, it's such an emotional process. You're trying to bring the calm in their storm. Yes. Right? Yep. And, and set those expectations and, and having an agent there to, you know, it's almost like you're, maybe you need to be psychiatrist or psychologist <laughs> too, right? Sometimes so. there's a little, little component of that at times. Yes. Right. Well, but, you know, because yeah. it's different personalities, right? Right. 
and, and you're just trying to keep, you know, everything together yep. and, and you're there and you're there for the advice and, um, you know, agents do so much more that's behind the scenes that people just don't see, um, right. or maybe even a- appreciate because I think, um, I shared with you 83 ways you could hit turbulence during a purchase right. yes. a home process. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and I can add another one after yesterday, yeah. um, just because things happen. Um, you know, when the first seller, if you don't have your pre-title work done and suddenly the deeds missing gone mm-hmm. from 1967, what do you do? <laughs> so, right. Um, and those are, right, those are all things that, you know, that's just part of my normal, more normal process, you know, preliminary title. We do that. We make sure everything's all set and clear and ready to go work through any of those things before we even get that offer. That way, once the offer comes, we're, you know, we're already just on a prepared. clean slate. Yes. And moving forward, informed decisions, right? I know you and I both work the yeah. same way. We like clients to make informed decisions. We like to help give them information so that they can make decisions um, and we can help guide them to make the decisions that are in their best interest. Um, you know, that's what we're here for. That's what we're happy to do. Um, so I thank and you. There's one thing you do fabulously. Well, thank you. One of many things, but yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I I appreciate it. I have been blessed to have a referral-based business um, because I, I put my clients first. I put their needs first. Um, and I just enjoy helping them. And I have... I have some of the best clients. Um, I love that I still have relationships with them even after the transaction and they end up becoming repeat clients for those that are ready to make another move. And um, yeah. it's just, I, I love it. And I, I love my clients. So thank you for joining me today, Jenny, and giving us hey, no problem. your perspective on the lending side. And if you are listening and you've been considering making a move, whether it's selling or purchasing, um, I would love to help. I would love to help you on both sides. I know Jenny would love to help on the, the purchase side of things. So feel free to reach out. And in the meantime, I hope you continue to uh, receive some value from these podcasts. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday at 12 on Tea with Tracy. So, thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Jenny. Okay. Right, bye. Bye-bye.